Give him some praise. That's all right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we get to the message, one thing I forgot to mention is, as we say, uh, every month we give our tithe to uh, one of our ministry partners, one of which is Venezuela now, uh, which is my father's 501c3 that oversees the ministry of the Seminary of Venezuela, as well as the Wesley Medical Clinic in Venezuela, which Dr. Maria Perona oversees. And, and this month, we are going to give to Venezuela, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Uh, we have been asked to uh, provide wigs for the cancer patients in Venezuela at the medical clinic. And so uh, Leem is going to go buy wigs uh, with the tithe money this month and send down to Venezuela. So we wanted to make you all aware of that, that we won't just be sending money this time, we'll actually be sending wigs for the ladies who have lost their hair. And so thank you all for giving. You can still give the rest of the, the month. You can make a special offering just for that. Um, and uh, we'll make sure those, those ladies get their, their wigs. And so please be in prayer for the, the Wesley Medical Clinic in Venezuela. Um, this morning, we're going to continue our series, the, um, the Words of Christmas. And last Sunday, if you were here, we talked about what we want for Christmas, right? And I said that while some of us are choosing to live in scarcity, Jesus is holding abundance in his hands, and he's asking us, what do you want, right? And as I said last week, I'm not talking about a PS5 or a new car. I'm talking about the deep need that you have, right? The, the, the healing that you need, the, the hope that you need, the, the reconciliation that you need. What is it that you want? So if you weren't here, you can check out the sermon on our website, gatheringatl.com. Today we're going to talk about surprises. And the next week we're going to talk about Santa Claus coming to town. When it comes to what we want for Christmas, as we talked about last week, we, we tend to make lists, right? I remember when our oldest daughter, Zoe, was little. We let her help uh, make an Amazon wish list of everything she wanted for Christmas. And at the end of it, it totaled thousands of dollars, right? She would just add whatever caught her eye. And she was too young to understand money, but I don't think she would have cared anyway, right? She saw what she wanted and she put it on the list. Now, because she was so little, she had no idea what she put on that list. And so when she didn't get all 1,538 things on that list, she wasn't upset because she couldn't remember what she put on it. But as we get older, right, the list gets shorter, and we know everything on that list. And so when something doesn't show up under the tree or in the stocking, we know it. This isn't in my sermon, but when I was a kid, I'd asked for this action figure, the coolest little action figure in the world. And I woke up Christmas morning, and I opened up all my presents, and it wasn't there. But here's the problem. I had found my Christmas presents, and so I knew it was in the house somewhere, but it wasn't under the tree. And so I had a conundrum, right, because I wanted the toy, but then if I mentioned the toy, my mom would know that I found my toys. I mentioned the toy because that was more important to me. So when we don't get what we've asked for, we know it's right. Or sometimes we get something that wasn't on the list. I remember, I've shared this before in sermons, but I remember when I was 16, I received something for Christmas that I never saw coming. And if you had asked me every day of the, le of the year leading up to Christmas to try to guess what someone might get me as a, as a surprise, I promise you, I would have never thought of this. It was a gift from my aunt, my dad's sister. It was small. It was wrapped. She handed it to me, and it didn't take me long to figure out it was, it was a cassette tape. Right? We still used cassette tapes back then, and so I didn't have a problem receiving a tape. And then I just assumed that it would be from an album, an album from some band that I love, like maybe Bob Dylan or The Grateful Dead or, or, or The Beatles. I was, I was a hippie in high school, right? I, I love those bands. And so I ripped the, the wrapping paper off, and, and I, I was excited to see the album that she bought for me. And so I got the wrapping paper off, and I just stared at this cassette, trying to wrap my mind around what I was looking at because it didn't make sense. I don't remember if I did it, but there's a good chance I picked up the wrapping paper to double-check the name on the wrapping paper. 
because surely my Aunt Anne had made a mistake. Unfortunately, she had not. She had bought her 16-year-old nephew a tape of Christmas music, just what every 16-year-old boy wants. Oh, yeah. Plus, it's a gift that is pretty much useless the next day, right? You stop listening to Christmas music. Now, I know my aunt meant well, and I genuinely said thank you, but, but because I knew she had no idea what to get me. But I have to admit to you today, I never listened to that tape. Not once. Sometimes, no matter what you want, no matter what you ask for, you end up getting a surprise. And when it comes to our Christmas gifts, not all surprises are good surprises, like a tape of Christmas music for a 16-year-old. But sometimes, the surprise is more than you could imagine. And so this morning, I want us to begin by looking at the same passage we read last week. It's John chapter 1, starting in verse 35. Remember, John the Baptist is hanging out with two of his disciples when Jesus walked by. So it's John chapter 1, starting in verse 35. The following day, John, John the Baptist, was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want, he asked. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. Again, last week we talked about Jesus asking, What do you want? But today I want to focus in on verses 40, 41, and 42. Well, we find out that one of John the Baptist's disciples was, was named Andrew. And Andrew had a brother named Simon. And as soon as Andrew met Jesus, what did he do? Right, He went to find his brother to tell him that, that he had found the Messiah. Now, this is not the point of the sermon today, but, but I want you to hear me. The church needs some Andrews. People who immediately after, me, after meeting Jesus run and tell their family and their friends and their neighbors. People announcing to anyone who will listen, I have found the Messiah. That hope that you've been looking for, I've met him. That, that joy that you've been looking for, I've met him. That peace that you've been looking for, I have met him. And his name is Jesus Christ. You see, we are not called to be mute, church. Too often we are. We will tell everyone with ears about our current favorite show on Netflix. right? We can't wait to talk about what we're binge watching. But what you're binge watching does not matter. I'm sorry, it doesn't. The Great British Bake Off is a great uh, show, but it's not going to save anyone's soul. When we discover the Messiah, God with us, the Christ, we should be running all over town shouting the good news. But that's not the point of today's sermon. Although for some of you, maybe it should be. Because you're trying to carve out a life as a mute Christian. Church, that's not a thing. Okay, back to the point of today's sermon. Andrew went to tell his brother Simon. Now notice what Andrew told his brother. We have found the Messiah. Now that would imply they have been looking Right? Or searching for the Messiah. See, the Jewish people had been searching and waiting for the Messiah for a very long time. From the fall of Adam and Eve to the birth of Jesus was around 4,000 years. I can barely stand in line for more than five minutes. They're waiting 4,000 years. And most Jews are still waiting. And so you had, you had generation after generation telling their children that the Messiah was coming. And we're going to touch on this more next week, but, but there was this sense of anticipation. 
If you have kids, you know this anticipation that's happening right now. My kids have been counting down to Christmas morning every day for the last past month. Every morning they ask Alexa, Alexa, how many days until Christmas? Imagine doing that for 4,000 years. My kids would have been kicked out of the house long ago. But they weren't just waiting for a new game for their Switch or a new laptop. They were waiting for the Messiah, someone to, to save them. They were waiting for a conquering king, a king who would rebuild the temple and establish a new Jewish kingdom. But what did they get? They got a baby born in a cave, a baby born to a couple of nobodies. Surprise! Church, when we find the Messiah, we better be ready for the unexpected. See, Andrew went to get his brother Simon. And, and being a Jew, Simon had been waiting for the Messiah his entire life. Now hear me, we don't know how he responded to his brother's announcements. We don't know if he completely believed his brother or if he was like, sure, the whole Jewish nation has been waiting 4,000 years for the Messiah, but my brother finds him. Okay, sure, uh, Andrew, show me this Messiah you found. That's probably how I would have responded if my brother told me. We don't know, all right? but, but maybe Andrew was completely trustworthy and Simon had no problem believing him. All right, but, but all that matters is he, he went to get him. And he said, come follow me. I want to introduce you to the Messiah. I found the Messiah. And I got to wonder what's going through Simon's mind as he's, as he's traveling to meet this Messiah, right? What does the Messiah look like? How tall is he? What do I say? Do I bow? Do I fall on my knees? How's my breath? I don't know what he was thinking, but I'm sure he was expecting something, right? We're all expecting something from the Messiah. We all expect something from Jesus, don't we? We talked about this last week. What do you want, right? We ask with expectations. We seek Jesus with expectations, don't we? We decide what we need, what we want, and Jesus is merely the means to the end, right? He's the road we take to go where we want to go, unfortunately. So we come to Jesus with expectations. So I'm, I'm sure Simon probably had some expectations. But I'm fairly confident in saying that Simon did not travel to meet the Messiah thinking he would leave with a new name. The passage says, Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Jesus uh, looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. Surprise! See, Simon was expecting one thing, but he got another. Simon showed up to meet the Messiah, and he left with a purpose. When we meet Jesus, we have to be ready for the unexpected. That's what happens when you encounter God. The entire Bible is made up of stories of people being surprised by God, right? Moses was a wanted fugitive with a speech impediment who at the ripe old age of 80 was called by God to go back into Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. Surprise! David was a kid when God called him to fight a great warrior with nothing but a slingshot. Surprise! When the Israelites were looking to capture Jericho, I'm sure they were not expecting God to use the prostitute Rahab to help them. Surprise! When Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, I'm sure they were expecting God to use for good what they meant for evil. Surprise! The prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 55, 8, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could, you could imagine. Now the Jared Latham translation is, get ready to be surprised. Because I don't think like you think. I'm not constrained by what constrains you. I am beyond anything you could ever hope to imagine, says the Lord. You see, surprises are in his DNA. The Jewish people were waiting for a conquering king with an army ready to do battle in earthly ways. What they got was a revolutionary draped in love and grace who is willing to die so that we can live. Surprise! It's not what anyone was expecting. No one expected that to follow this Messiah would mean that they would have to love their neighbor as themselves. No one expected that to follow this Messiah meant they would have to love 
their enemies. No one expected that to follow this Messiah meant they would have to embrace being marginalized. No one would expect that to follow this Messiah meant they would have to be willing to surrender their life for his sake. Surprise! Jewish people were looking for a king to conquer Jerusalem, and what they got was a king who came to conquer their hearts. Surprise. This is who Jesus, the Messiah, God with us, is. He is going to surprise you time and time and time again. And sometimes you'll love it. Other times you're going to be wondering, what are you doing? Again, I told you last week, Jesus is asking, what do you want? And I told you, ask him. Right? Ask him for what you want. He may say no, but that shouldn't stop you from asking. But I also said, if Jesus says no, it's because he's got something better for you. Right? You're over here asking for this, and Jesus is showing up saying, surprise. And you're sitting there saying, no, 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 that's not what I asked for. And Jesus is saying, yeah, I know, but this is so much better. This is going to bring joy and peace and hope and blessings in your life. But you're still like, yeah, but that's not what I asked for. That's not what, on my, what was on my list. Did you get my list, Jesus? We have no record of Simon asking to have his name changed. But Simon being called Peter was God's purpose for Simon's life. See, Jesus' surprises are never because he ran out of time Christmas shopping for you and had to stop at the gas station. It may be a surprise to you, but it was God's plan all along. Church, hear me. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes, even you. He is a God who cares about every detail of your life. And so you may not understand what he's up to, but he is working on your behalf, either to bring you back to him or to bring you deeper into your, in your relationship with him or to use you to reach someone else or all three. Seeing God move is more important than fully understanding why he's moving. Hear that. Seeing God move is more important than fully understanding why he's moving. Knowing God wants the best for us is more important than seeing the full picture of what he's doing. See, living like this allows us to celebrate the surprises of God, to rejoice that we worship a God who calls us to love our enemies, to, wor to rejoice that we worship a God who calls us to die to self, to rejoice that we worship a God who calls us to pick up our cross and follow him, to rejoice that we worship a God who calls us to live a holy life. None of it might be what we ask for, but it is exactly what we need. Jesus was not the Messiah that Jewish people were looking for, but he was and he is the Messiah that they need. He's the Messiah that I need. He's the Messiah that you need. His ways are not our ways. And to that I say, praise God. If he showed up at Christmas with a cassette tape of Christmas music, I could either complain that it wasn't what I asked for, or I could receive it, give thanks for it, and then watch how he used it to bless me or bless those around me. You see, his surprise is an invitation to take part in his purpose. Hear that, church. His surprise is an invitation to take part in his purpose. As an invitation offered to each of you. See, it surprised a lot of people that he was born in a cave surrounded by a bunch of dirty animals. But surprise, he did that for you. His teachings surprise a lot of people, but his teachings will transform your life and this world. His death by crucifixion surprised a lot of people, but he did that to pay the price for all of our sins. His resurrection surprised a lot of people, but he did that so you and I could live even after death. His life surprised a lot of people, but his life brings us life. We may not understand all of it. We may not see how he's working at all for good for those who are living according to his purpose, but that is okay. If Jesus is doing it, if Jesus is giving, it is beautiful. And it is exactly what 
we need. It may not be what you ask for, but surprise, it is so much better. Are you allowing Jesus to surprise you? Or are you one of those people who says, I hate surprises? <laughs> are you allowing Jesus to surprise you? Or have you missed what he wants to give you because you've only been looking for what you've asked for? You've been asking for one thing, and he showed up with a cassette tape of Christmas music, and you just can't see the point. Or have you fought fully surrendering your life because Jesus' teachings just don't make enough sense to you? Right? Your enemy stole your childhood. How in the world could you be expected to love him? Right? Your family taught you to look out for yourself before anyone else. How in the world could Jesus expect you to, 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 to lay your life down for those around you? Right? But surprise, Jesus is countercultural church. The angel Gabriel showed up to Mary and said, surprise, you're going to give birth to the Savior of the world. An angel appeared to Joseph and said, surprise, Mary's going to give birth to the Son of God and you're going to take him as your own. An angel appeared to some dirty shepherd and said, surprise, I bring you good news. The Messiah is born. Surprise, church, the Messiah is born. Surprise, Jesus is alive. So don't close yourself off to the surprises of God. Don't fear them. Embrace them. Rejoice in them. Let him surprise your socks off. Some of you need to hear this right now. Surprise. Jesus loves you. Surprise. He says you are his child. Surprise. He says you are worthy of his love. Surprise. He has a unique purpose for your life. And so church, this Christmas, how about asking for a surprise? How about looking at God and say, okay, God, surprise me. See, it's not in my sermon, I'll just say it. I hate when people say that to me. When I say, what do you want? They say, surprise me. No, 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 don't say that. Tell me what you want, right? Because I'm a horrible gift shopper. But God is going, no, 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 tell me to surprise you. I want to surprise you because you don't know what you need. You don't know what you really want, but I do. And so ask me, surprise me, God, and I'm going to show up. It's going to be the most beautiful thing you could have ever imagined. Surprise me, God. I surrender everything to you, so surprise me. Show me something new. Point me in a new direction. Call me to something new. Bring something into my life that I never expected. And through it all, help me to receive it. Help me rejoice over it. Are you willing to pray a prayer like that this Christmas? Are you willing to let go of your Christmas list and just say, surprise me? Hear me, it might be the scariest prayer you, you will ever pray. But when God answers it, just hold on for the ride because it's going to be marvelous. He wants to surprise you because he wants you to live the life he has for you. No matter where you are today, no matter how lost you are today, he is still the God of surprises, so let him surprise you. Ask him right now even if you think you've got your life figured out, even if you know that you're living the life he calls you to, I want you to invite him, I want to invite you to ask him to surprise you this Christmas. Lord, I think I'm living according to your will, but I'm inviting you just to surprise me. He may or he may not, but the important part is that you're in a posture to ask for it and in a posture to receive it. So ask. So I'm going to give you time right now to ask. I'm going to give you some time to pray. And I want you to let him know you're willing to be surprised. That you're open to him doing something new in your life, even if you don't understand it. I'm in a room with very successful people who have worked hard to achieve where they are right now. 
And they got their life figured out. And they're holding on. They know exactly where they're going. You've got retirement figured out. You're going to be set for retirement. You've got it all figured out. Are you willing to take it and hold it with an open hand and say, okay, God, here it is. Surprise me. It's not in my sermon either. But since he's in the room, I'll share it. My dad pastored Mount Pisgah and I Methodist Church up in Johns Creek for 17 years on staff for another three after that. Took it from 75 in worship on that first Sunday to over 3,000 when he left. He achieved success. Everyone came to Mount Pisgah and said, how, how, how are you doing this? Teach me your ways, they would say to him. I'm kidding, but they would come to him asking him, tell us how you did this. It was the pinnacle of ministry. Mount Pisgah was the gold standard, at least in the United Methodist Church in the United States. But my dad was always willing to ask, okay, God, surprise me. And in 2000-ish, he started going to Venezuela. And Venezuela has become the greatest ministry of his life. After all of that which would have been the pinnacle. You could retire right off into the sunset. I'm done. I achieved it all. But God said, I got a surprise for you. You have no idea what God wants to do with you and for you. You have no idea. I don't care who you think you are. All that matters is who he knows you. And he wants to surprise you. Are you willing to ask? Are you willing to give him all of it? I say, Lord, I don't know if you're going to take this away from me. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but here it is. I just want you to surprise me. I'm willing to accept your surprise. And so I'm going to give you a moment just to bow your heads right now. Where you are, just bow your head and close your eyes. I want to invite you just to ask him, okay, Lord, do you want to surprise me this Christmas? And just begin praying through that. Tell them you're willing to be surprised. And to help you accept that, that gift, that surprise gift, and rejoice in it. Father, I think back to Simon. I'm not sure how old Simon was at the point of this story. But his entire life, he had been Simon. When supper was ready, his mom called for Simon. When he was out in the boat fishing, people needed to come to shore. They called out, Simon, come here. His entire life, he was Simon. And yet in this moment, he became Peter, the rock. And because of his faithfulness, he helped birth the church of Jesus Christ that has spread across this world. I don't know if that would have happened if the very next line of the scripture said, no, 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 sir, my name is Simon, not Peter. Lord, break me right now. What if Simon had said no to the surprise? Lord, we have all succeeded in life. We, we, we have jobs. We have families. 
We have things that we like. But what happens if you show up today and say, surprise, I got something totally different for you? Would we say yes, Lord? Lord, I'm asking you to tell us right now, would, would Jared Latham say yes to that, Lord? Convict me. Pray that for all of us. If you showed up in our lives with a surprise, let us know right now, you know what? I don't think you would accept it. Convict us, Lord. Because, Lord, I want to be a person. I want us to be people who live with arms wide open and say, Lord, whatever you got, even if I don't fully understand it, I want it because it comes from you. So surprise my socks off, Lord. Let that be our posture this Christmas and every day going forward. When we wake up, say, Lord, I don't know what is in store for today, but surprise me. Lord, if you want to change my name to, 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 to Peter, you go right ahead. If you want me to walk away from, from a, sal a salary that pays uh, six figures, tell me and I'll do that tomorrow. Whatever it is, Lord, just tell me because I want to live according to your will. I may not be the next Peter. I may not be the next David. But that's okay because that isn't who you called me to be. I just want to be the person you want me to be. And I know in order to be that person, I've got to welcome your surprises into my life. And so Lord, I thank you thank you for who you are and what you give us and how you pour into us. Help us receive it. No matter what it may be, even if it's a cassette tape of Christmas music, let us rejoice. But it's all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.